Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Panerai Luminor 1950 Submersible 1000 meter PAM243. 44 millimeters in brushed stainless steel. This one is the standard bearer for the long running Panerai Super Sub or the Luminor Submersible 1000 meter 44 millimeter line. Now that started with the original Panerai PAM64 Bomba back in 2000, continued with the 87. And since 2006, this model, the 243, has been the carrier of the torch for the traditionally sized Panerai Luminor, but it does have an important refinement compared with its two predecessors, and that is the introduction of the 1950 case profile, once considered to be a sort of combination of different shape and different size, 47 millimeters, it now refers to a profile and a shape rather than a size. You can now get the 1950 in a traditional 44 millimeter Luminor. So on the wrist, you can see the 1950 case with the 44 millimeter proportion wears large in terms of its aesthetics, but comfortably in terms of its ergonomics. Now, traditionally, the Panerai Luminor has been the big watch that fits a smaller wrist, and that continues here with my wrist six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, being a little bit below average for a guy, but also being flat across the top and oval in cross section, it's got a fairly standard shape. So the short lugs in the cushion case mean that the watch doesn't want to really capsize, it doesn't overhang the edges of my wrist, it doesn't have a feeling of imbalance to it, and it's very comfortable, no pressure points or hot spots. And while half of the ergonomic equation is the shape of that finely finished, complex contoured 1950 case and the way it sits, the other half of the ergonomic equation is this bellows or accordion style dive strap that Panerai includes with the 243. Now it has a lot of flexibility built into it and that's great if you want to wear the watch on a smaller wrist or if you want it to arc up and over a long sleeve, a thick coat, or a dive suit. So very substantial but also very soft because of the natural vulcanized rubber and very compliant because of the flexibility built into the pleated bellows. I like that a lot and I like that it's paired with a flexible brushed steel traditional pin buckle. Great if you want to adjust the size of the strap as your wrist expands during outdoor activities, heat, contracts in the cold, or if you just want to wear the watch over something. No need to modify a bracelet, no need to play with the deployant pin. Easy to do, easy to resize, very convenient, fits the character of the watch and fits the aesthetic of the watch with a huge trapezoid form. Like the rest of the watch, it's really larger and tougher than life, Panerai style. Now you can see that being a 1,000 meter Panerai Luminor submersible, it's not like the 305, it's not like the 300 meters that qualify as dive watches, but are restricted to about 300 meters, so roughly 1,000 feet. This is a 1,000 meter, so suitable for use with dive bells, exotic gas mixtures, and if you're that one in a million guy who's actually going to be diving like that, Panerai includes the helium escape valve on the flank at 9 o'clock. Now granted, Almost nobody needs that, but the bottom line is it's like a Ferrari. Who needs 12 cylinders and 600 horsepower? Well, the bottom line is it's nice to have. It's cool. More than you need, more than you expect. That's the definition of luxury, and this is a luxury watch. So not only do you have the helium escape valve, but you have the traditional Panerai Luminor submersible calibrated dive bezel. Now, this is an ISO 6425 true dive watch, so you have the ability to set the index the luminescent pearl at 12 to the minute hand. Now I like to say that you can use this for timing anything from a barbecue to the kids time out and that is true but just about anything your imagination can muster. For instance I had a Bond Seamaster, an Omega Seamaster back in college. I used to use that to time test so I knew how much time I had left. The bottom line is like I said anything you can imagine that requires timing up to 60 minutes the bezel gives you that kind of flexibility like an impromptu chronograph. Heck you might even use it to time a dive. Imagine that? But make no mistake, this is a dive watch, and you can see the depth of the dial. Matte black with applied dot loom indices and the sausage style raised printed Arabic numerals at 12 and 6. This is not the Panerai sandwich dial. It's what's known as the applied dot slash sausage type dial. And it is set so deeply into that bezel, not just because the bezel itself is thick, but because the crystal is over 5 millimeters deep. Massive, but also surprisingly practical for land lovers who never plan to take the plunge. Why is that? Because you've got over five millimeters of solid sapphire that's going to resist shattering if you accidentally do strike this too hard against something like a doorknob, sheetrock, or a car belt buckle. When you have a thinner sapphire crystal, 
It is possible with extreme trauma to shatter it. When you've got five millimeters of crystal, it's a lot harder to do. So there is reserve toughness here, even if you never plan to go reef diving. A nice feature to have and nicely complements the promise that this burly case makes. So moving on to the flanks, you can see that although it's a 1950, although it's a super sub, it is still a Panerai Luminor and it has that classic Luminor shape. About as wide as it is high, it's the cushion case. And from the side, it's the crown guard that strikes you as the most distinctive features of the watch. Now the device protecting the crown, as it's known, Invented in 1950, patented in 1956, when Panerai watches were still made for the Italian Navy, is a clever alternative to the screw-down crown that you'll find on, for instance, a Rolex Oyster case. Those can be difficult to manipulate when your hands are wet or sweaty or you're wearing gloves. As soon as I pull out the locking lever here, I can wind the watch, I can pull the crown, I can make adjustments, and all that without doing excess damage, you know, without any excess wear and tear on the seals or the lubricants within the stem tube. If you continuously screw a crown out, screw it back in, you're going to leave a mark on the watch's watertight integrity and compromise it faster than if you simply forego the threaded screw down crown concept and physically lock the crown down with something mechanical and externally braced, which is what the device protecting the crown and the cam-based locking lever accomplishes. Now, because this is an M-series Luminor submersible, PAM243, you have the little built-in roller bearing known as the runner that plays on the convex surface of the crown, so you have a smoother engagement and release than when it was purely a friction lever back in the day. So more refined, Panerai does embrace its identity as a luxury watchmaker today, and small details show that Panerai is finding ways to keep the essential rugged identity of its watches intact while offering more for the money that luxury buyers expect, and the runner is an example of that. Another example of that can be seen on the case back, where Panerai's lug quick release system is evident in both sides, and you can use this to depress the button slide the retaining bar out of the lugs and swap the straps at home without any specialized tools and without the intervention of a jeweler. Now whereas the early Panerai Luminors would come with a screwdriver and the lugs were secured to the strap via screws, a lot of people who shall we say did not have the steadiest hands would disfigure their watches trying to take the screws out of the flanks of the lugs. So Panerai incorporated these underslung push button quick releases for the bars. No longer screwed in, you simply depress this dimple, push from the side, and the strap comes off. Great because half the fun of owning a Panerai watch is swapping straps. And believe me, there is a universe of aftermarket and Panerai factory replacements available. Anything from Stingray to calfskin to snake, if you want to put a different rubber on it, if you want to fit a textile or a NATO, it's all good and anything goes. And the bottom line is it's never been easier to swap the straps than with the quick release lug system built into this PAM243. Now I do want to give a shout out to the movement inside because it's a long running Panerai classic. It's the caliber OP3 automatic winding COSC certified Swiss chronometer, extremely accurate the standards for Swiss chronometer certification as part of a two-week timing test in multiple positions at multiple temperatures dictate that at no point over 24 hours may the movement lose more than four or gain more than six seconds. So you've got that chronometer certification. You've also got tremendous toughness. The movement inside is as tough as the case on the outside because the OP3 is based on a non-chronograph version of the automatic winding Valju 7750. Panerai removes the chronograph elements and just uses the date and the three-hand time functions of the 7750. Again, given the robustness of the 7750, it's a perfect match for the exterior. It's a perfect match for the image of the Luminor submersible. And it's got some goodies built in, specifically that COSC chronometer certification and hacking seconds. So when you do pull the crown, you stop the balance so the seconds hand stops ticking and now you can synchronize to a reliable reference timer like an atomic clock, your buddy's dive watch, or a third dive timer that you're all using as your reference. So mechanically robust, thoughtfully refined, the 1950 cased PAM243 is the latest evolution of the traditionally sized Luminor, but with the super sub modifications. And if that sounds good to you, you can see this Panerai Luminor 1950 submersible 1000 meter PAM243 
on our website, Watch You Want.